Hey everybody, it's Party Elite here with an online battle of my own today, and boy has it been a while since I've posted one of these, mainly because it's really hard to pick between them, I think. Now, I hope you enjoyed this showdown. I tried something a little different. I've got a Marathi-led Dark Elf force against the good old Greenskin boys, led by Christian57943. We begin, of course, with talk of composition and deployment, and like I said, just trying a couple different things that I don't usually do with the Dark Elves over here. I've got Marathi in charge up in the air. She is going to be assisted by a War Hydra. I think this might be the first time I've brought one into a quick battle. The front line here consists of these alternating Bleak Swords and Hargoneth Executioners, so we've got some Silver Shields, and we also have Armor Piercing and Anti-Infantry capabilities. Well, right behind them on either flank, we have the Dread Spears, and of course, they'll perform some Anti-Large Duties, while right back here, my range contingent consists of these three units of Black Arc Corsairs with their hand bows. These guys can fire while moving. They can, you know, hold their own in melee if push comes to shove. So I wanted to try these guys out. I find they're a pretty decent pick. And we also, uh, like I said, have the War Hydra here, hoping to use it for morale damage, crush through the front lines, chase after enemy uh, command structures and infantry units, and see overall what we can do. On the other side of the field, the Greenskins are led by none other than Grimgore Ironhide. And up front, we've got two units of Orc Boys. These guys may be acting as sort of filler troops, I suppose. Right behind them, four units of Black Orcs. These guys are going to be threatening, of course, as they are quite armor-piercing and capable. Behind that, we have the Hammer of Gork firing away already, hoping to get some early damage in, while right back here, we have three units of Goblin Wolf Riders, one of them being the Moon Howlers. Off to the side, meanwhile, three units of Orc Boar Boy Biggins, one of them being the Broken Tusks mob. So these guys are pretty threatening. They are armor-piercing and anti-large, so I'll need to make sure my Hydra stays clear of those three. Now, at the same time, you can see as we kick it off into full speed, there's some range fire coming in from the lob. We're getting some early damage into these Hargoneth Executioners and the Corsairs over here as well. I tried to dodge it by stepping back. I don't think it did the best. Uh, maybe helped a little bit. We only lost one Hargoneth Executioner there. And you can see immediately I have to close the gaps. I'm not able to just sit back and relax, obviously, because that lobber is going to get a lot of work done. Marathi, meanwhile, is up front sort of poking and prodding. I've never quite used the wand against Grimgore Ironhide, so I wanted to see how much work it would do. I was expecting Wurzak perhaps on the other side of the field, so I try to pop this wand just to see how much it'll do, and you can see it comes down here, and uh, good job of kind of dodging it there, but ultimately as the bombardment there hits, you can see it barely does any damage. I think it takes off maybe a hundred or so hit points from Grimgore, so it's not going to make a very big difference whatsoever. Meanwhile, the rest of my army is slowly creeping forward again. I have to close that gap as quickly as possible. The lobber back there continues to fire away. It's already got a decent amount of damage done to my Black Arc Corsairs, as well as the Hargoneth Executioners. In comes another set of shots, doing a lot of work there. The Black Arc Corsairs have been put down to about a quarter health before they've been able to shoot a single shot, and the Hargoneth Executioners as well. They've lost maybe about a fifth of their health or so, they haven't done any work yet, so a very dangerous situation, obviously, just trying to close that gap as quickly as possible, and now the Greenskins as well, pushing forward, trying to close these gaps. I'm trying to organize myself appropriately, firing away some of these boys to get rid of them nice and early. The Bleak Swords are focusing in on the Orc Boys, while these Hargoneth Executioners, you can see, are pushing off to the side against these Black Orcs, and over here against these Black Orcs, hopefully being assisted by these Bleak Swords with rear charges, as all of these Wolves push off to the side, and the Orc Boar Boy Biggins are seeing a glorious opportunity here, uh, focusing in on these Bleak Swords over here, so you can see they're pushing in to charge in, while my uh, Black Arc Corsairs are firing away at these Black Orcs over here as the Hargoneth Executioners are trying to close the gap and keep them safe from that inevitable charge. At the same time, you can see on the topic of charges, these Bleak Swords are getting absolutely demolished by three units of Orc Boar Boy Biggins, as well as, of course, one of them being the Broken Tusks mob, just charging in through the Bleak Swords, and that's a terrible situation for them to be in, and as a result of that, they're actually not able to assist my Hargoneth Executioners on the left flank here as they fight these Black Orcs who are getting some help from Wa and Stand Your Ground from Grimgore Ironhide. At the same time, I sent Marathi in there. Definitely not the best idea, not the ideal situation for her to be in, um, but I wanted to use some of her abilities to reduce the enemy fighting capabilities, of course. Not really working out for her, however, as the Hydra over here as well is able to dive in through these Orc Boys and get a fair bit of damage into the Black Orcs as well. These Hargoneth Executioners did manage to push in from the side as these Orc Boar Boy Biggins, despite being hit by Melkoth's mystifying Miasma, are giving some solid chase to these Black Orc Corsairs with their handbow. So a terrible situation for me to be in as they just punch through those Bleak Swords and they go chasing after my range contingent. I do send my Dread Spears over here around and in, chasing after these Broken Tusk Smob and the Orc Warboy Biggins as I hope that they'll get engaged and stuck in with some of these Bleak Swords. And you can see to the right over here at the same time, these Wolves were able to completely circumvent my Spears. I try to send them in to intercept, but they are, while well, they have relative free reign in the back lines over here, they're able to push right in. You can see these guys turn in and chase after these Black Arc Corsairs with handbows and these Wolves as well are able to push in 
against the spare unit back here. At the same time, you can see I've got Murderous Prowess kicking off now, so it's going to help me tremendously, especially in the case of these Black Art Corsairs with their hand bows. They'll actually maintain some capabilities in melee against the Goblin Wolf Riders. They'll probably actually come out on top. But Marathi over here has finally peeled away from the very dangerous engagement she was stuck in, lost about half of her health, so she's going to take to the air, and I'm going to try and find a way to keep her alive. You can see these Harganeth executioners have been completely destroyed as well, while to the right over here we have sort of an even matchup, but these Bleak Swords are able to get a nice rear charge in here, and that's going to work out for us for sure. These Dread Spears, meanwhile, are trying to close the gap on these Goblin Wolf Riders over here as they take care of my Black Heart Corsairs, and you can see over here we have Broken Tusk Mob as well, pushing in for a nice charge, just trying to eliminate all of my Black Heart Corsairs, eliminate that range support, but I get this nice clump to hit with Soul Stealer, of course, so I get Soul Stealer in for Marathi, trying to keep her alive, and you can see I send her charging into these Orc Boar Boy Biggins as well. She is anti-large, she is armor-piercing, so these Orc Boar Boy Biggins that are focusing in on my Black Heart Corsairs are going to be very quickly taken care of. They take about 20% damage on the charge, which is insane, and that obviously drops their morale as well, and I can pull my Black Heart Corsairs with their hand bows into some safety now. As you can see, Terror is kicking in on these clumps as well, as the Hydra is far too close for some of these units to be comfortable, but you can see the Orc Boba Biggins over here alongside the Goblin Wolf Riders are taking care of my Black Heart Corsairs with the hand bows, so I have my Dress Spears right here pushing in to try and eliminate that unit. At the same time, over here, you can see Grimgore Ironhide is pushing into this clump, trying to take care of some Bleak Swords. Would have been much better, I think, chasing after perhaps some of these uh, Harganeth Executioners, or maybe going after my hand bows perhaps eliminating my range capabilities but in that situation the war hydra is going to turn around and focus in on grimgore ironhide so not the ideal situation and at the same time you can see i do have melkoth's mystifying miasma on broken tusks mob obviously they're not charging around right now but i want to try and cause some damage to that very threatening unit they are again anti-large and armor piercing and they are on my hydra so i don't like that situation and you can see here these bleak swords are being taken care of by the black orc so the left flank has definitely not gone my way the right flank, though, I am coming out on top as these Harganeth Executioners just finish off some of these Black Orcs. And back here, you can see my Black Orc Corsairs with their handbows are able to pull away as these Orc Boar Boy Biggins do get scared off between Marathi and the Dread Spears. The large units from the enemy side do not stand a chance. My Hydra now has to pull back into some safety. I'm hoping to get a fire attack off, but unfortunately, I just don't get the chance when he is engaged in melee, of course. Over here as well, though, these Black Orcs still coming out on top against the Bleak Sword. So I have my Harganeth Executioners who just rallied over here, pushing in for a nice rear charge, hoping to finish off these Black Orcs while my crossbows here, my hand bows rather, sorry, continue to fire away into these giant clumps of black orcs as Grimgore Ironhide finally engages some of these Harganeth Executioners, uses Wa as well as Stand Your Ground to keep these guys alive and fighting, but of course in comes all that range fire, absolutely devastating these Black Orcs. In comes Soul Stealer as well, trying to keep Marathi alive, of course. She is just above half health, and I can cause a little bit of damage at the same time at these massive clumps, maybe take care of these Orc Boys at the same time as these Black Orcs. The Hydra, you can see, meanwhile, has provided a decent amount of assistance to this left flank of Black Orcs, is now turning around to get involved back over here. Again, just trying to get a fire breath in, I think, on Grimgore Ironhide, but but the Hydra decides to get distracted instead by this Black Orc. And of course, a beautiful animation over here as that Black Orc gets completely, well, ripped to shreds. I do love this animation. It's probably one of my favorite ones over here. Just tossed up in the air and, uh, well, eaten up. Nicely done, but at the same time over here we have these Orc Borbo Biggins coming back into the fight. A nice rear charge into my Black Art Corsairs with their handbow. So again, a terrible situation for my ranged contingent. Very well done by my opponent, keeping my archers completely occupied, but I'm finally able to shut down the Hammer of Gork, which has been doing a fair bit of work throughout the rest of this battle. 48 kills on that thing, not an ideal situation whatsoever. And you can see all of my Black Art Corsairs with handbows have returned to the fight. They are firing as they move. Again, that's one of the reasons why I brought them on the field here today. And now Grimgore Ironhide is going toe-to-toe -to -toe against a War Hydra, and I would hedge my bets on the War Hydra if I was a betting man, and he is coming out on top of the Hydra, just throwing Grimgore Ironhide around taking some good bites out of him, his morale is dropping, his health is at 50%, and look at this terrible, well, it's a combination of a good move and a terrible move. We've got these Goblin Wolf Riders pushing in together, all three of these units, including the Moon Howlers. Wonderfully done, again, shutting down my Black Art Corsairs with handbows, but at the same time, pulling Grimgore Ironhide towards that same engagement. And the reason why that's a terrible call is because my Hydra is giving chase. I'd already committed my War Hydra into that battle, into that engagement against Grimgore Ironhide, so this is an absolutely massive mistake because I'm bringing in the fear, the terror, the morale damage that comes alongside a War Hydra. And you can see some of these Goblin Wolf Riders immediately being terrified off, not willing to stick around and fight, and Marathi is able to push in and looks for an opportunity to dive in and provide some support as the Hydra continues to give chase to Grimgore Ironhide. And I'm of course able to pull back these Black Arc Corsairs with their hand bows and fire away from a safe distance while these Dread Spears also get involved against the Moon Howlers. You can see Marathi diving into some of these Goblin Wolf Riders here trying to finish these guys off. Eventually she will use Melkoth's Mystifying Miasma once more. She has nowhere else really to use it 
it. So might as well just try and finish off some of these units and hope for the best. And Grimgore Ironhide at the same time, you can see fully surrounded, being hit up by the Hydra as well. The hand bows aren't even firing into him anymore. I'm pretty confident that my War Hydra is going to come out on top. And you can see over here that Melkoth's mystifying Miasma, forcing these Goblin Warfighters to rout and give up on the fight. Grimgore Ironhide ultimately decides, I think, to drop his flag as well. He's not in an ideal situation. That Hydra is biting out chunks of Grimgore. Poor old Grimmy. And ultimately, a Pyrrhic victory for my Dark Elves. Now, I wanted to try Marathi out as a Lord here, and apart from the wasted bombardment that I was hoping to use on a potential Savage Orc unit or Wurzag, I think she did quite well. Soul Stealer is always an excellent pick, and her ability to shut down the extremely eager and large cavalry contingents worked wonders. The Hydra did a good job of bringing fear and terror in as well, and I was quite pleased with its performance against Grimgore, but I think the true stars were the Corsairs with handbows, willing to stick around and fight despite being hounded by the enemy. And that meant I had time to respond with Dreadspears and Marathi alike. As always, make sure you subscribe to this channel for more Total War content. Online battles, Total Breakdown will continue to bring a constant flow of tactical analysis and advice. And naturally, I'm always keeping an eye out on the horizon for Total War as well. Thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to meeting you on the battlefield.